Welcome. Thanks for joining us for the Envelope Live Screening Series. My name is Robert Abley. I'm a contributor at The Envelope. And today we're going to be talking about the film Cab, which is Turkey's submission to the Oscars for the award for Best International Feature. Joining us is the film's writer-director, Typhoon Hirsilamoglu, and its producer, Vildan Eraset. Their movie, based on the writer-director's own novel, is a deadpan comic mystery about a man attending his father's funeral who witnesses a murder then finds himself strangely unable to leave town. Filled with the unexplained and the weirdly familiar, it suggests what would happen if Kafka and David Lynch combined their dreams over some very strong coffee, or in this case, tea. Welcome, Typhoon and Vildan. Hello. Hello. Um, so I'm going to start off by asking about the title. What is what is the title? What does the title mean? Oh, it's care. Uh, it's a very old Turkish uh, word, meaning as uh, just uh, stopping and restarting again, repeating. Uh, so I do believe everything is repeating. So I wanted to use this title for the novel and also for the film. Uh, so uh, basically, it it uh, indicates uh, my view about the life. Yeah, re repetition is a very uh, big part of this movie. The, uh, the the way the way your your lead character gets asked over and over the same question gets to be um, it's funny at first, and then it then you kind of feel your own like anxiety about it. <laughs> yeah, just because this uh, this guy is uh, totally astonished and surprised to be in such an environment, it's such a, a weird situation and I can't find anything uh, as, a, uh, as an uh, answer. So he, he repeats the questions and they're asking the same thing. And in fact, I'm asking the same question myself about the life and what's happening all over the world. And still, I want to ask really what's happening. Was that the um, inspiration? Can you talk about the inspiration for, I guess, what was first a book and then the movie? The, yeah, the, I, I published this book years ago, and this was, uh, it's, the, it, the, the reason is writing such uh, weird stories, uh, the reason is the life itself, because it's really suffocating what's happening all over the world. And everything is meaningless, and I'm trying to find uh, the reason what's happening, all happenings. Then uh, it's a kind of they, you, you said it's Kafka. Is, in fact, we have to find something uh, more, uh, something that uh, corresponds exactly what's happening now. It's something more than Kafkaesque. Uh, so we have to find an, another expression about this. Vildan, did you read this book and want to make it into a film, or did Typhoon come to you? How did that work? Uh, yes, uh, I, I read the, the book uh, when it was published. Uh, but I, actually, at that time, I didn't know that uh, it will be a film. Uh, so because uh, Typhoon doesn't uh, didn't uh, decide uh, about uh, making a movie, uh, from this book at that time, uh, but after after our second movie, uh, the previous one is Sideway, which we worked with together. Uh, after that, he told me uh, he told me that I want to uh, make a movie uh, about this book, and then we uh, uh, started to make this movie. What I mean, what is the starting point? Do you have to write a screenplay or do you location scout? Because that town is very, very particular. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, it was started uh, with, with the screenplay uh, at the beginning. Am I right, Typhon? Yes. In fact, uh, I have to tell something about this. While you are writing a, a, a novel, it's my personal ex uh, uh, way of writing. is just a filming in my mind. So writing uh, action is also for me just to shooting a film in my mind, just a film for me in my brain. So it's 
it's always happens in, the, in this way. So it also happened uh, regarding this book. And then uh, somehow I decided to, to, to make it a, a film showing to all, all the audience, not, all, not all, only the readers. So uh, then I wrote a, a short uh, as a script. But on the other hand, I, I travel a lot in, in, in Turkey and I always collect the, the interesting places. So they are all accumulated in my brain also. So coming together, the location and the story is, is a kind of surprising sometimes. And in this film, it's happened because some of the locations I found before was there were exactly the the the, uh, the places that I told before, so they came together and uh, it was then easier to develop the script. So you really can you really can put what's in your head onto the screen. Mm, it's it's always. The, the 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 film in my brain while I, I was writing is a bit different than what 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 I showed. It's uh, because it's uh, if, while you are writing you are you are totally free. There is no limitation. But in shooting uh, in shooting there are some limitations and there are a lot of things that you cannot interfere. Sometimes it's not enough to to create the location of uh, uh, with the, in in the right time, so filming film shooting a film is a very complicated and more complicated than writing. Is that why when you have an idea, you prefer to write a book first because it's it's solitary, it's just yourself. It's, it's yeah, it, it, this is easier. Yeah, I. But sometimes I think the reverse. Uh, for example, uh, we are planning to shoot a, a new film. It's a, a idea. So we will shoot probably in, uh, in, in two months we start. So I'm also thinking after the film, I will write, I'm planning to write the, the book as a novel. So it's uh, another challenge. Mm. So you like you like the idea that every every idea concept is is both a, is something written down and something you can see. Yes, it's uh, whatever you visualize in your in your mind is possible to be shown to the others, but it depends on the the circumstances. If you can find the right places, right persons, and everything has to be in the right. Uh, direction, then it works. Otherwise, it's very complicated. Vildan, what what do you like working with Typhoon? Uh, what I like. Yeah, why, why do you like work, working with with Typhoon? Ha! Huh. Uh, actually, uh, uh, at, from the beginning, uh, from the first uh, movie of Typhoon, uh, I like to see uh, uh, his movies, his his fantasies, his worlds. Uh, so that's why actually it, it is my preference uh, is that I want to produce what I want to watch. Uh, I like that kind of thriller elements uh, to, to, to watch the thriller elements and the, the film noirs and etc. So uh, that's why uh, I, I want to be involved in his projects. What did you like most about this particular movie, Build On? Uh, actually, there are some, <laughs> not <laughs> just one, uh, because some some part is um, uh, the the big part for me uh, is a political uh, situation. But it's not I about just in Turkey; it's about all over the world. The political situation is going a mad, uh, and uh, actually, the 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 whole part for me. Uh, that the political uh, situation, but the other side is that about the the thriller elements. The the, the, the uh, there is a crime, so I, mm -hmm. I I like the crime uh, stories, 
so we are following a, a crime uh, story, uh, but we never, uh, at the end, we never uh, find the the the, uh, the 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 point. Uh, that's exactly what I like uh, to watch. Yeah, I, uh, this is for both of you, really. Um, you know, with a movie like this, perception is everything. How how you know what a viewer brings to the movie, as opposed to what the movie tells you. So, how do you keep the viewer, you know, engaged? In, in, you know, interested in the movie when they're not being told what to think. True. Yeah, th this is a it's one of the. <clears throat> important questions that uh, I'm uh, also involved because first of all I have to admit that uh, I'm shooting films first for myself what I mean it's I have to make a film that I like and uh, this is this is the first first step for me to to produce a film and uh, but of course I do believe there is a secret agreement between the audience and the film and when an audience enters a theater uh, he he or she comes to the theater because of a satisfaction satisfaction of uh, of uh, happiness or uh, uh, scaring or laughing whatever and if he or she cannot find the uh, uh, if, it, if it's not satisfied, then it, it, it's called as a bad film. No, I do believe the film it's, it itself has also an, uh, is its own intention. So they have to come together with some efforts. So I also demand some effort from uh, the audience to understand, not understand, to 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 come at a point that there is something behind the, these pictures. Uh, uh, perception, I mean. So, uh, and I will, I'm very happy after the screenings that uh, people are asking questions uh, about the, uh, what I did. So this is the main point for me, just to introduce some question marks and the, the, the audience uh, living in the theater will have some question marks in their brains. The good films, I do believe, uh, have more question marks than the others. Phil Don, do you want to comment about that or add something to it? Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, I agreed with Typhoon. Uh, uh, also, I, I can add something that I uh, uh, Typhoon always uh, at the Queer Days. Typhoon always uh, says to the uh, audience that uh, you have a question, but I will not answer your question because every er, everyone has a, has an answer and uh, all of them is right. Actually, it's what happens. I never uh, when I read the the script. Uh, I I have also uh, some questions, but I never ask to Typhoon uh, what what do you mean about, uh, for example, uh, for a scene. What do you mean uh, uh, about this scene? I never ask because uh, I I have my answers, and I do believe that my answer is the the right one for me. So I never ask anything about the the some of the points to Typhoon. I, I I just want to add uh, to Typhoon's comments. I just so, want to add something. It, it, once Jacques Tati said something very important that he said, the good film starts after you leave the theater. I I agree with that too. I, I agree yeah. with that too. I pay attention to how, I pay attention to how often I think about a movie after I've seen it and, and play it over in my head. And, uh, and this is definitely one of those movies. Um, and I knew also, Vildan, I somehow knew not to ask Typhoon what he meant by certain scenes. <laughs> I thought that would, <laughs> I thought that wouldn't, wouldn't, that wouldn't help. But I will ask you this, Typhoon, how, how would you describe your sense of humor? Uh, it's a very particular one in this movie. Yeah, this is, uh, I, 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 it's also in my books, almost the same uh, humorous approach. 
I like to introduce something that the, also there's a funny side, whatever you are talking about or you are seeing, and this must be flow underneath of uh, the plot, not directly, and you can, or some touches, some just points, but not uh, pointing in, the, in just to, with the intention of just to, to show off, just imply something behind. There is always something behind. So I like this kind of humorous uh, touches in my films. And uh, yeah, I like also this part of my movies. Can you talk about the casting of your lead, um, Erdan? Uh, uh, he's, he's kind of perfect for this movie. His face, he has a great face. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about how you found him and what it was like to, to direct him? Yeah, this is also, it's a <laughs> funny side of the film because normally when I'm writing a book or the, the script, I visualize uh, the characters. The first time in, in this film, I couldn't see exact face of uh, the main actor. And uh, so it disturbed me a lot. So I suffered a lot and uh, I checked and checked and checked. And then oh, at, just at the end of uh, this adventure, then uh, I found Erdem. No, I don't make any audition with my actors. I don't, I don't believe in the audition. I respect to the people doing this, but I don't. I don't do this. So I, what, what I do is just to talk directly, a conversation, and just to understand the other side, just for, also for them, is, uh, also the same thing is valid for them to understand me. So I met him in a coffee house, and we talked about two hours. And he was so surprised because he, he's not well-known actor. He's a very good actor in theater, but he didn't have uh, too much experience in filmmaking. So, but this is why I talk to the people, to the actors and actresses, just to get the impression that he can or she can do or not. I do believe at the moment I understood that he is the right person. And uh, he, he was a bit uh, scared and uh, he felt himself is insecure, but this is, I like very much the insecure actors and actresses, the best actor and actresses. So in, in this film, uh, so it was a kind of dancing. It's a, in the right moment, in the right foot, in the right place. And it worked, I do believe. Neil Don, do you wanna talk about Air Dan, what it was like for him? I, I, I like uh, his acting very much, uh, but uh, I, I can add uh, this one uh, at the very, very uh, end of the uh, the shooting time when we will start. Uh, the, the I was very scared about that because Typhoon didn't uh, found the, uh, find the, 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 the correct actor for, for it. And as a producer, I was scared about that because <laughs> I think it was, uh, it was, Two or three uh, weeks to the uh, uh, to the shooting, uh, the starting time, uh, but the finally uh, uh, the result is wonderful. Uh, so uh, I'm very satisfied about that. Did he know how much running he would have to do? <laughs> no, he. This is what I said. He was uh, so uh, insecure. <laughs> Um, you mentioned you mentioned um, uh, how much you like it when you when 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 you get to hear what people think about it. Is, is that what really is fun about? Um, I mean, when you take a movie to festivals and and get different kinds of audiences seeing it, is that is that one of the more fun parts of your job? <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. This is also a, a nice side of filmmaking because <laughs> I travel a lot and I like to travel and to, to meet the people from the different countries and the different audience, I mean. And because 
Can you imagine that you are producing a film in Turkey and then you go to Japan or Argentina and you talk to the people and the, when the audience have sometimes totally different responses, sometimes very, uh, very same, too much same. So this is uh, why the filmmaking goes, or the film, film itself is universal. Uh, what I mean, sharing and uh, disagreement in, in the same uh, subject. And I like this. I like this discrimination of uh, different uh, propositions. About this seems the like the kind of this, this seems like the kind of movie that you would hear both. I thought it was really funny, and I thought it was really scary. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it happens. It happens. And then, and <laughs> what's interesting, I, my, I think my third film, the, the Haze, it's a, it's a, they say very heavy film, and uh, then. Uh, a year ago, I met a guy. He told me that he saw film seven times. <laughs> I said, I never watch a film seven times, even my film. <laughs> but he said, it, this film was very funny. This also, I, I surprised a lot because it's uh, the, 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 the opinion about the film is so heavy and so dark. So this is what I like about uh, my way of filmmaking it's uh, so catching because i do believe myself it's also there's a very funny side in the film but it's not easy to catch so sometimes i i meet some people that can catch what i was trying to to express this is important a, a movie like this um it's very you know it has a very deliberate style it looks like you know you you composed everything deliberately but is there room for um improvisation for making things up on the day of shooting there is always improvisation you have yes i i deliberately uh, design everything <clears throat> i work my homework uh, very uh, very deeply but on the other hand, cinema, the filmmaking, uh, there is a room for, of course, improvisation or some surprises, and you cannot control. So, uh, till that uh, to a, uh, a, a, a moment that you can control everything, then you have to leave it. You have to leave it deliberately, because then you can catch something that you can never uh, plan before. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But mostly I, I catch the right uh, surprises on the right time. And so also the directing the, the, uh, the actors, I, I uh, let them to go in an extension, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a point that they can go, but from that point, if he or she can do something that beyond of uh, the thing that I uh, planned, then I let it go. I, 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 if, it, if it works, then it's okay. Otherwise, I interfere. Dildon, what is Typhoon like on a movie set? What, what kind of set does he run as a director? Uh, I like I like him a lot uh, at, at at the set, especially uh, during the shooting uh, time. He he is always very calm, and because he knows everything, uh, because he uh, as he told that uh, he worked uh, very hardly on his homework. So he when he come to the set. He knows every, uh, what what whatever uh, he create in in his mind, and he uh, he do it. So we 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 don't we don't have too much takes. Um, seven, eight, the most one. Uh, so he he knows 
uh, very well what he he is doing. So it's it's very, how can I say? It's very fruitful for me uh, mm -hmm. as a producer uh, because the the sets are very very fast, uh, and also the his his uh, attitude is always very calm and very. Um, how can I say very peaceful? So it also helps to to the all for me and for also the all the crew and the cast. Uh, so uh, I I like to work with him a lot. Well, um, it's not good for the director to be uh, treated as a very calm. Normally, <laughs> directors have to be <laughs> for angry ones, and uh, yes. because the set is the place that uh, your ego is. Totally free. So mm -hmm. I don't believe in. I I do believe every everyone in the set has to do something, and uh, this is one of one of them is uh, the director, and I do my homework. And by the way, I also, I as I told you that I uh, I work hard before shooting, and uh, I make my storyboards myself. So mm -hmm. before going. To do to shooting, then I know everything about the frames and the lightnings and everything and the, the angles. Uh, so this is why it, it it's so fast. And uh, if you do your job well, then it's fast. Is it the situation where when you prepare so much, then you then you can be free on the set like that? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, you, I, you know, you, I mentioned. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, this is what I, I was repeating myself. <laughs> well, that would be very appropriate for this movie. Um, oh, so, this is <laughs> right. um, so uh, <laughs> and I mentioned I mentioned Kafka and, uh, and David Lynch in my introduction because that's what it came off to me. But are are they influences of yours? Who? What are what are your influences as a filmmaker? Oh, he, of course, I I I love. Both of them as a writer and a director, and uh, when you read something or when you watch a film, and then something just accumulates in your brain, but it's, it's still, then it, it shapes also uh, what you are producing in in in, in the course of time. Uh, so. Kafka especially is a is a writer that uh, I like very much. But <laughs> I was also thinking, I'm also thinking about if Kafka uh, were living now in this world, what would he write? Maybe it will be different than what he wrote before because it's the situation is <laughs> more serious than before. Uh, this is why I was I was trying to to tell you that uh, we have to find a, a different expression about the situation. And uh, David Lynch is also his vision is fascinating, so I like him very much. Also, uh, it's a split; it's totally different than the others. I like them, but it's not an influence. It's just to 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 love them. Was there anything um, about this movie? Was there was there a first image in your in your head for this for this story and this book and this movie? What was the first thing you thought of? The, about the care, you mean? Yeah, yeah. This is also an interesting point because uh, I like very much to be in editing. So editing is. It's a kind of uh, puzzle, and I work with uh, a, a friend of mine. He's a, a great editor, and uh, so even though I visualize everything and I put everything in, in just the right uh, points, but in uh, in editing uh, room, then you can find something that's more fascinating than you thought before. So in this film. Uh, yeah, this picture were, were different, so we decided to put this uh, uh, radio room at the beginning and at the end. By the way, in all of my films, the first picture and the last picture are the same. So this is why it's also called uh, repeating everything. 
So yeah, so it's a, yeah, like a circle um, in a way, yes, right? Yes, this is circle. No, this is circle. Yeah. Well, uh, that, uh, that that sounds like the ideal way to to bring bring our talk to a close. Thank you, uh, Tyquan and Bildon, for for coming to us to talk about care and and give us some of the thoughts and and insights into the making of it. So um, thank you, and then thank everyone for joining us for this uh, edition of the Envelope Live Screening Series. Um, and we hope to see you again soon. Inshallah, you say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.